coming up on this edition of Gridiron Sports Talk. Stay on the gridiron. We're coming up with information on contact sports and epilepsy and information from the Epilepsy Foundation. All that and much more when, when Gridiron Sports Talk starts right now. Welcome to this edition of Gridiron Sports Talk, the one and only program that focuses on abilities in sports and other sports information related to abilities in sports despite disabilities. I'm Lauren Seiler. Uh, we would like to thank our uh, partners in this, um, the Association for the Blind Vermont, Higher Ability, Vabra Vermont, and many, many others. Um, this particular uh, website and information comes from www.epilepsy.com forward slash parents and caregivers uh, when it comes to epilepsy and other sports activities. Um, uh, so let's um, scroll down here. Um, as you can see, according to the Epilepsy Foundation, uh, there are different sports. Um, which deals with seizures such as football, baseball, hockey, boxing, and other uh, situations. So um, let's um, go into um, sports. Let's, so let's start, since it's summer, let's start with um, safety tips for swimming and water sports. What the heck? Oh, here we go. <laughs> um, safety tips for swimming and water sports. Swimming is a pleasure for all children who are... Oh, here we go. Sw swimming is a pleasure for all children and should be encouraged to enjoy. Although water poses special dangers for children with seizures, there are usually ways to make this a safer activity for most children. The main question is, how, how much supervision is needed? Children with severe of frequent or frequent seizures can enjoy the water <clears throat> if a parent or caregiver holds them in a shallow, a shallow pool or body of water. Wear a life jacket or life vest as well. Um, hold children... Um, uh, so... Children with well-controlled seizures can be encouraged to swim with reasonable safety tips. Make sure at least one person knows the child has epilepsy or who knows basic life-saving tips nearby. Make sure the child knows how to swim. Depending on the child's ability, the um, ability to swim and the amount of, of available supervision, children with seizures should avoid um, swimming in deep water. Tips with children with occasional seizures that can affect motor control or awareness. Supervise the child closely. Uh, seizures are sometimes unpredictable and many are difficult to detect. Encourage swimming only when a lifeguard is on duty and responsible to be aware of the child's disorder and well as another child in the pool who, <clears throat> who is the buddy. The lifeguards should know and must keep their eyes on the pool or a place that they're swimming while the child is swimming. The body system is used in many camps for children and adults in, who are scuba divers. And is another, there is another precaution to keep children safe. The body should be responsible and understand the need for keeping an eye on the child and should never go far away from the, from, the, uh, from the pool. Open bodies of water. Swimming in a lake, bay, or ocean 
is much more dangerous than in a swimming pool. A person swimming in open waters can disappear in seconds and be impossible to locate quickly. Generally, children with epilepsy could swim only in clear water and they're always in sight. If a child with epilepsy, um, especially one with poorly controlled seizures, um, it is important in swimming open waters, he or she should wear a life jacket. Competitive swimming, uh, the child with epilepsy who wants to swim more competitively, competitively should be encouraged should be encouraged. Competitive swimming practices and matches are usually well supervised. The coach should be aware that the child has epilepsy. Everyone involved, including the child, should recognize that there's some additional risk to this activity and make an informed decision of whether it is worth it. And let, let's um, scroll down here. If you are um, if you're outside and bicycling, bicycles are a part of childhood, yet a bicycle is ridden on, on or near the street presence um, as a particular danger for a child with epilepsy. If a parent rides just behind the child on the sidewalk during a complex or partial seizure, the child <clears throat> may accidentally veer off into the street out of the parent's reach and protection. There are tips to make bike riding safer and more fun. Everyone who rides a bike should wear a helmet. Injuries on bikes are more often involved the, um, more often involve the head. If the seizure is under control, do not impair motor control or consciousness. Bicycle riding should not be restricted. Ride bikes in the park or in other, in other safe places away from motor vehicles. Stationary bikes for exercise pose no serious danger for children with epilepsy. Ideally, the floor should be carpeted or padded. Low-seated bicycles are the safest. Now, if you are horseback riding, horseback riding can be fun for children and adults whose seizures are well controlled or always preceded by a warning. Those who have seizures could cause them to fall off a horse and can ride more, clear, <clears throat> more clearly supervised. Someone would need to walk aside, uh, alongside them, alongside the horse. The risks and benefits of horseback riding must be carefully weighed for these children. Competitive horseback riding also involves galloping and jumping and should only be considered for children with mild or controlled epilepsy. Now, here's where other contact sports, such as football, baseball, and others, okay? Um, other contact sports are okay for children with, are they okay for children with seizures? Contact sports such as football, basketball, soccer, rugby, ice hockey, and or boxing for children and adults with epilepsy. Um, the main concern of contact sports is the chance is the chance for the main concern with contact sports is the chance for head or bodily injury. But children with epilepsy or adults with epilepsy may not necessarily more likely to be hurt than other children if the absence or complex partial seizure um, could occur 
during a game when there's a small chance of injury if someone were to tackle the child or adult, for example, or for instance, during the spell. Tackle football, rugby, ice hockey, or higher incidence of injury than, than most other sports and participation in them. And participation in them should um, be limited to children with well-controlled seizures. There is nothing wrong with a child who has occasional or even frequent seizure playing touch football in the backyard. Don't, f don't forget to weigh the risks against the benefits of sport. Um, the chances of serious injury are small compared to positive effects of team participation. Boxing should be avoided by all the by all the children, especially those with epilepsy. Boxing can result in head injuries. Since the momentary lapse can can mean taking a hard hit to the head, children or adults with absence of seizures or complex partial seizures are particular risk of injury from from boxing. Head injuries can also aggravate seizures or other disorders. Wrestling can be safe for children with well-controlled seizures or seizures that do not impair consciousness or motor control. It can be dangerous for, uh, for other children with epilepsy. Now, if there are activities that involve heights. Some forms of gymnastics are dangerous for children with epilepsy. Those who are well controlled seizures should consider should consider performing on the high bar, uneven parallel bars, vaults or rings. Other gymnastic events um, other other uh, gymnastic events such as floor routines and pommel horse pose little risk or the parallel bars are immediate risk and and reflects on specific exercises that are done. Climbing a rope higher than five feet is also dangerous if seizures are not well controlled. Um, let's go back up quickly. There's something that I kind of forgot here. Okay. What activities or sports can children with epilepsy do? It is important to individualize recommendations for children and adults with seizures. Epilepsy can affect a child differently. A number of factors need to be considered such as seizure type and frequency, medication and side effects, other medical and developmental problems that affect a child or adult's epilepsy or when it comes to activity, <clears throat> the child's ability to follow instructions and act responsibly, the type of activity or exercise, Safety precautions or supervision. Benefits of exercise and participating in activities. Um, and, and there's a, a piece here that's important. How can I balance a child's safety with the ability to enjoy physical activity and sports? Common sense should be the guiding force between these decisions. This is to parents. The goal should be both safety and lifestyle and as normal as possible. While no activity is completely safe, restricting children from many activities can limit the child, to, the child too much or the child or adult 
too much. Restriction and isolation foster low self-esteem and emphasize the disability. Certain activities in sports can be dangerous for some children, especially if seizures are not well controlled. By the way, this um, again comes from www.epilepsy.com forward slash parents and caregivers about sports and safety tips. Uh, while no activity is completely safe, restricting children from activities can limit the child too much. Restriction can foster isolation and low self-esteem. Certain activities and sports can be dangerous. Um, can be dangerous um, for for <clears throat> for some children, especially if seizures are not well controlled. Talk talk about each activity with the child's health care team first. Most often, they can help figure out um, about uh, the child's about the child to be active and participate and have fun. How does seizure type and frequency affect a child or adult's activity? Now, um, there, there's um, a piece here that's important. Um, let's, let's go down here and fix that. Okay. Um, children who have motor control or consciousness is impaired during a seizure as well as high risk of injuries. Children who have uncontrolled frequent seizures know that certain activities are restricted. For example, they should not sw swim alone, they should not swim alone or over their head. In fact, no child should swim alone. Children with any type of seizures should play or exercise with a buddy. If possible, wear, wear appropriate safety gear for the desired sport or activity. Ride a bike or, um, or on a path or, or at a park where it's safe and not near cars. Ride with someone and don't forget the helmet. If, if a child with seizures is more common times during two hours. If if a child if a child seizures are more common at certain times within two hours of awakening, for example, activities can be scheduled for the times when seizures are likely to occur. Um, and we have a couple of minutes left, so um, there's an important piece here also. Are seizures provoked by exercise? Exercise rarely provokes seizures. It um, it is possible through <clears throat> it is possible though, especially if the child gets too tired or dehydrated while exercising. If a pattern between seizures and exercises it seems to limit um, the type of exercise or try the activity for shorter periods of time. Rest frequently and stay well hydrated. Encourage the activity in the coolest part of the day or hot weather. Um, the amount of intensity of exercise may gradually in be increased the, child uh, the child's to uh, tolerance. It is without any problems. And this is a commentary that I, I want to bring up. When you're dealing with dangerous sports such as boxing, football, baseball, and even hockey, where they have, uh, if you go to a hockey game and they have a, a glass partici uh, partition so the, so the puck doesn't hit the bystander or, or the public, um, you know, the public, uh, it's important to take um, safety precautions when going to these uh, sporting events. Some years ago, uh, the New York Yankees, uh, they didn't get in trouble 
But uh, New York Yankees uh, actually helped pay for medical expenses um, when it came uh, to a fan, um, um, a, a, a young fan got hit with a baseball. So the, um, the Major League Baseball organization, what they did was after that incident in the mid-80s, early 90s, uh, what happened was they ended up <clears throat> they ended up um, putting n uh, netting in some, in a lot of baseball stadiums so people don't get hurt. Please be cautious when going to stadiums. Please be cautious during the summer when you're uh, crossing the street, or just make sure you don't get hit by a, a football, baseball, or anything of that nature. And please protect your head. Um, I'm sure you can go to a sporting goods store uh, to um, to get a helmet if you need it. When I was a kid, I ended up, uh, you know, when I was younger, I ended up um, using a helmet even for everyday life for a little while. Uh, so if I fell because of my seizures, uh, I wouldn't get as hurt. Please um, be cautious. And this puts an end to this edition of Gridiron Sports Talk. We talked about dangerous sports and seizures. Please be cautious these summer months. I'm Lauren Seiler. Thank you to our sponsors, uh, our, um, our partners, the Division for the Blind Vermont, Higher Ability, Weber, and many, many, many others. Arlene is not here today. I'm Lauren Seiler. For more information on Gridiron Sports Talk, you can go to www.orcamedia.com. Net. I'm Lauren Seiler. Stay on the gridiron. See you next time on the next edition of Gridiron Sports Talk.